The notorious F-89D Scorpion is one of the rarest vehicles in War Thunder that can still be obtained by players. Let's take a look at this highly unusual and deeply misunderstood aircraft. The very first thing I want to say is that I got this vehicle temporarily through a test drive. So, before you start yelling at me in the comments for being a wallet warrior or something, don't be hatin'. This video is brought to you for free by a test drive. Why do I mention that? The F-89D is not only a premium vehicle, it's locked behind the F-89B. That's right, folks. You need to already own the premium F-89B before you're even eligible to buy the F-89D. See that little green circle? That shows I had a test drive. Trust me, I'm absolutely not in a position to dump that much money on a plane for a YouTube video. Maybe someday if this channel takes off, but not right now. Anyway, the F-89 Scorpion was originally designed in the immediate aftermath of World War II in the late 1940s, and the project had some seriously ambitious design objectives. The original RFP included automated radar gun turrets in the front and the back of the plane, unguided rockets, and the ability to carry some bombs. Well, needless to say, most of those requirements were thrown out the window before the first flight of the prototype. The F-89 first flew in 1948 and was introduced to service in 1950. When you're looking at this plane, its weird shape, and its odd capabilities, please remember that it's very much a product of its time. The original purpose of this plane was to intercept Soviet bomber formations at high altitude. This was not meant to be a regular fighter, and they gave up on serious ground attack capability pretty early on. The F-89 was completely phased out by the late 1960s, being totally obsolete by that point, but not before upgraded models were built carrying the AIM-4 Falcon missile and wait for it, the MB-1 Genie air-to-air -air nuclear rocket. Seriously. In War Thunder, we have two versions. The F-89B, which was the original model armed with cannons, and the F-89D, armed with unguided rockets, which is what we're looking at here. The only time the F-89D ever saw combat in real life was during an incident commonly known as the Battle of Palmdale, where two of them were scrambled to shoot down a U.S. Navy drone that had gone out of control over California. They failed, miserably, and ended up raining rocket ammo down into some populated areas and having some of their rockets detonate on impact with the ground, which ended up starting a pretty massive forest fire. Whoops. Oh, and that Navy drone? It eventually crashed out in the desert all on its own. The F-89D, as presented at War Thunder, is... A really weird plane. It has tracking-only radar with a range of two kilometers and no search mode, and its only weapons are unguided rockets. The radar can lock up your own rockets, by the way, so if you actually get a radar lock on a target, you might lose it when you're firing. There are three loadouts, one with air-to-air -air rockets and two with air-to-ground rockets. Now, I flew this out as close air support in a couple of ground RB matches, and to be honest, I really wasn't impressed. The air-to-ground rockets are very difficult to use, and they don't hit as hard as they could. There are much better ground attackers at this battle rating. The air-to-air -air rockets are another story. You get 104 M439 rockets. In reality, the F-89D did not get these. These rockets are much more modern, and were primarily carried on helicopters in the 1970s. As a weapon in War Thunder, these rockets are both a blessing and a curse. The first thing to know is that these rockets seem to have been nerfed at some point. You may have seen, you know, other videos out there, or read posts on Reddit, with people getting kills from 4 kilometers by firing a few of these into a furball and stuff, but... The blast radius seems significantly smaller than it used to be, going by some of the footage I found of the F-89D on YouTube from last year. 
Why does the blast radius on an unguided air-to-air -air rocket matter? These things are proximity fused. They will detonate on a near miss and don't need a direct hit in order to damage the target. But the damage of the individual rockets can be somewhat low. There are two obvious strategies for using these things. Fire them off in salvos, hopeful for a couple of hits, or try to ping them off two or four at a time in more carefully aimed shots. It's personal preference. I tried both styles and found some success and failure with both methods. The good news is, when you do get some kills with these rockets, it's very satisfying. I had a few luck shots out past two kilometers, and I'll admit it was pretty amusing when it actually worked. The flight performance of the F-89D is tricky. Flying this plane is like walking a tightrope. If you go too fast, you're done. If you go too slow, you're done. If you get impatient, you're done. If you try to turn fight, you're done. If you get up-tiered, you're done. The plane has very poor acceleration at the bottom end of the speed curve, but once you get going, things even out, and if you stick to high speeds and gentle turns, you can pretty easily keep this plane above 700 kilometers an hour. You'll have to balance your speed very carefully though, and if you go into even a shallow dive, jam on those air brakes for a couple of seconds or you'll rip your wings off. The F-89D used to be broken, and I mean that literally, its damage model was faulty, but it's been fixed now, and I can confirm that this thing absolutely will rip its wings off pretty easily at high speeds. The plane doesn't turn very well on any axis, and it bleeds off speed very fast in a turn fight. Given that it has such poor acceleration at the lower end of the power curve, even underpowered turn fighters can energy trap you in this thing, so be careful. Also, this plane is enormous and tends to be pretty easy to hit with guns. Keep that in mind and try not to let people get too close. Flying the F-89D out into air RB missions was, to be honest, an exercise in frustration. It gets the runway spawn, and because you accelerate so poorly early on, most of your team is going to beat you to the action. You're going to get left behind. You'll almost never actually get the chance to intercept enemy bombers, remembering that that was the original purpose of this plane in real life, because either they'll already be dead by the time you get to them, or they will have dropped their bombs and turned back for home, and you won't catch them in time. Now, it may just be the times of day I was flying this plane, or just bad luck, but most of the matches I took the F-89D out ended up with uh, my team pretty spread out, and the enemy team grouped up into a big powerball. So, going in for attack almost always means that I'd get jumped by four or five people, and I had to be incredibly careful walking that tightrope in order to get any kills. Add to all of this, the F-89D has a pretty sour reputation, and people love to shoot down super expensive premium planes, so you've got a big target on you as soon as you're spotted. Landing the F-89D is pretty basic. The plane has an effective air brake, so you can slow down easily, but be careful. This thing lumbers around a bit at low speeds, and it kind of feels like landing a small bomber. The visuals with the F-89D are... iffy. There's a second skin available, but honestly, I kind of resent that they want you to dump 200 GEs for the custom skin on a plane that you already dumped over 10,000 GEs to get. Come on, guys. The cockpit is okay, though, despite the radar scope being non-functional. Good visibility and good details. To close out the F-89D, this plane has a highly unique weapon system, which, if you practice with it, is capable of getting pretty long-range distance kills and has some serious trolling potential if you put the time in to get good with these rockets. Also, it's got afterburners, so once you get up to speed, you can stay near the top of your energy bucket with careful flying. On the downside, this thing is double deep in the premium column and has serious energy problems at low speeds. It can't turn, and its reputation often makes you a priority target for other players. The final verdict on the F-89D 
is that this is a really odd plane layered beneath another premium vehicle. You've got to really want this one. And if you can't find a way to make it effective, it's going to be a serious letdown. It's potentially a very fun plane, but buyer beware. As always, thanks for watching.